Hello and welcome, amigos. Today we're gonna to be making something called pastes. Pastes, pastries, very similar. This delicious pastry is filled with a ground beef and potato and it's nice and juicy and once we bake them, you get that perfect crisp on the outside that just flakes off. They're original to Real Monte Hidalgo, which this recipe was originally made to help the miners eat quickly and get to work. But for us, we're gonna make it super easy and you know, Bring those helping hands because the kids love to make empanada style pastes. I have my all purpose flour. I'm gonna add my salt and my pinch of sugar. We need to incorporate the fat into our flour, so we're gonna add it gradually, okay? So I'm gonna start off with my butter that I've already chopped up into little cubes. I love to see butter cubes like that because I know it's a good followed by a good pastry. Something good to you eat. know it. <laughs> this is this is one of those uh, pastries that are so versatile once you learn how to make it. But I definitely think you guys should try the recipe as it is. You know, it's paying an homage or respect to Real Monte. And, you know, we got to be grateful for these little delicious treats that come our way. I'm going to begin with the butter. And then I'm slowly going to start adding our lard. And both of them are cold, okay? Make sure that they're cold. Friends, at this point, make sure that you're preheating your oven to 425 degrees. Now you skippers, make sure to look in the description box so you know the bake times. Bake time and temperatures. <laughs> I'm gonna remove my whisk. And this should take you about uh, three to four minutes to do my, the fastest speed I went on was four because we don't wanna melt the butter or the lard. We just wanna incorporate everything together. Now those of you that don't wanna use the lard, try to use uh, vegetable shortening, palm oil, those work. It's definitely a different flavor than what we traditionally get, but it still works. So it's just like a fine, soft, it's almost like coconut flour, the consistency that you get. Because we are dealing with a pastry, we're gonna be adding our uh, cold water and it's really cold. I even put an ice cube to kind of melt in there and keep it cold. We're gonna be adding it a little at a time. I'm gonna recommend three fourths, but depending on your region, you might need a little bit more, a little bit less. So add it gradually until it soaks up into your dough. I'm gonna add my water gently and I'm not gonna go over a four for this particular step. I don't wanna melt the butter in there. I just wanna incorporate and hydrate everything. So speed on four. Um, yeah, Maybe. Max. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I'll let you guys know right now. <laughs> and I am gonna say this. Every time you add water, give it about 30 seconds to make sure that you're not overdoing it. I'm gonna make sure to come in here and scrape the bowl to make sure that we don't have any uh, flour that hasn't been touched at that little bottom part if you're using your mixer. And if you're doing this by hand, it's super, super easy to break your butter and your lard into your flour. You have to use the same steps or similar steps as a tortilla for that matter. And the rest you can just, you know, add your water slowly and, and continue. But since I'm getting a break here, let's, let's keep at it. <laughs> Okay, that took us about four minutes to do. I was very gentle. It's nice and hydrated, as you guys can see. So we need to let this rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it in my refrigerator for about 20 to 30 minutes. You guys can cover it or put it in the container that works best for you, and I'll see you shortly. I have my pan set on a medium heat. I have my desired amount of oil. Now, let's start sauteing our onions. I have a combo of white and green onions, but make it comfortable for your home. We're gonna cook our onion, our onions. 
<laughs> Guys, when you go to the store, ask for onions. Ask for onions. <laughs> so we're just gonna cook our onions until they're softened for about three minutes, okay? <laughs> it's been four minutes and our onions are nice, translucent. They're ready for our next step. So let's go ahead and add our ground beef. Thanks for the tip, friends. You're so stubborn, girl. I tried to get you to use that years ago. Well, <laughs> love takes time, Cloud. <laughs> Once you break down your beef, you're gonna go ahead and add your seasoning. So we're gonna go with some salt and pepper here. We're gonna mix it up and we're gonna continue to cook until um, about the redness goes away. So it should take about six to eight minutes. But remember to season your salt and pepper to taste. It's been six minutes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my Anaheim roasted pepper. I chopped it up nice and fine. Don't shy away from the recipe because you don't see you see beef or a chili you don't have. You can make this with ground turkey, ground chicken, uh, which is how I made it for my mom, and she loves it. With so, soy crumbles, I mean, there's the possibilities yeah. are endless. Or just with potato, you can do that. I chopped my potatoes about this thin, and I have them in a cup and a half of water. We're gonna add it all in. We're gonna mix the potatoes in here, and we're gonna let this cook for about 12 minutes or so, okay? We just want to make sure that we cook the potatoes enough uh, when we place it in our filling. I'm gonna continue to cook this on a medium heat. Hang tight. Okay, friends, our potatoes are nice and soft. Now we're just gonna go ahead and add our cilantro. This is traditionally made with parsley, but for me and my family, I think it works best with cilantro. But you guys can make it comfortable for your home. So now that we have this set, we're gonna go fill our pastes. I let my dough rest for 20 minutes. Now we're ready to roll. Add some flour to your area. And if you have a smaller working space, just uh, cut your dough in half and start that way. I'm just gonna roll this out to about here and then we're gonna begin making our little circles. Can you show us where you're up to where you're gonna roll it up? Uh, to about here. Okay. I'm just gonna thin it out when I see a good um, thin piece, then I'm going to start uh, cutting. Okay. It's because you usually draw on the sand for us and tell us where. Oh, I'm sorry, friends. We're going to be about over here. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> I am one of those moms that are like, you spoiled your kids too much. Well, what are, are you supposed? To, what else are you supposed to do when you have kids? Right? You got to make them happy. Well, because you adjust to their taste buds. Yeah. That's very sweet of you. Well, I have to. I mean, how else would I have gotten my son, which is on the spectrum, to enjoy so many uh, varieties of flavors, textures, you know, and national dishes. And if you notice, I like to lift it and move it around because sometimes it's such a soft dough that it'll get stuck to whatever you're rolling it with. That way you can get more of a stretch out, okay? We're coming at about half a centimeter for those of you that need um, to know how, how thick these are. Let's begin cutting. This is the kid's favorite part. If you don't have a cookie cutter, you can use a cup, use a bowl, cut around it. You can still get it done. The rest of this dough, we're gonna throw in the, tra I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're just gonna make it into a nice little ball. Squeeze, squeeze. And while you're preparing these, put it in the refrigerator so it stays cold. And we're gonna continue to make um, our empanadas, okay? To keep our workspace functional, I'm gonna add some flour here. I'm gonna start moving them to the side. You don't want them to stick, so dip them in a little flour. Continue. Add a little bit of flour. 
bring your little disc and this is not going to be like the tortillas halfway press up or halfway press down you're going to be gentle you're going to hold it from the sides and we're just going to roll it back and forth just like this and i'm pressing down gently i'm not being aggressive at all just gently give it a slight turn and continue we're looking for it to be uh, about six inches so but you're gonna make them at home you know make them comfortable for your home you don't have to be perfect especially if the kids are making them you know I love to see when the kids make their own baked goods you know the kitchen really helps children that's why my babies I think that's one of the big reasons why they're so happy you know yeah they love being in the kitchen yep we're about six inches I'm using a small uh, ice cream little scooper. I don't know who eats that small of a scoop of ice cream, but. Not me. It's a little cookie scooper. For the cookie? For the <laughs> cookie. So go ahead and place it in there. And you wanna make them, you wanna fill them nice, okay? You wanna fill your family up. So about three of those guys, you think? Yeah, about three, ends up being about two and a half to three um, tablespoons. Press it down if you need to. Bring it over, just like that. Don't be scared. Help yourself with your fingers here. And yes, friends, you have noticed, I am double jointed in pretty much all my joints. <laughs> I should have been in the circus, girl. <laughs> I pay to see you. So now we're gonna do the same style that we did with our, um, our empanadas. So two, four, six, seven. And we're gonna begin to fold. I like to take this corner and press it in. Take a little piece and press it in to the little hole. So where you made the indention, fold it over. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thanks Good for tip. the translation, uh, Cloud. You're so great with your with your linguistic skills, girl. Would you stop it? <laughs> I just that uh, this is how I learn. <laughs> so come in here and press it to make sure that it doesn't open up on you. And we're set. We're gonna continue making all of our pastas. So enjoy the ride, friends. You're gonna take one egg, you're gonna beat it, and we're gonna brush our pastes. And brush them good, because that's how you get that glossy, little crackling look that we all love. And if you've never loved it, you're gonna love it after this. Perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and bake these in the oven for 10 minutes at 425 degrees, but hang tight because we're gonna have to adjust that temperature. This is what they look like after 10 minutes and I already switched my time to 350 degrees and we're gonna keep an eye on them. It's gonna be anywhere between 25 to 35 minutes depending on your oven, but I set my timer to 30. Views Club and Bells. Thank you so much for joining me for this recipe. I'm wishing you the best as always. And if you haven't taken the time to set your notifications and subscribe, I would dearly appreciate that along with your thumbs up and your comments. And on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. I really love how the dome comes through and you can see a little pocket and that helps you fill it up with um, your chiles and escabeche, which is what you have this with. They are so flaky and perfect.